One of the most passionate subjects of my heart is helping people to experience the love that God has for them, which was demonstrated through the life of Jesus Christ. But everything that Jesus did pointed back to relating to the Father. And it's been my journey of helping to equip people to experience the depth in knowing what it means to truly be loved by their Father in heaven. And see, it's interesting because God in his nature presents himself to us as a father. So in order to relate to his love, we have to understand who he is as a father, as a dad. And it brings us to a very interesting place, a very delicate and wounded place, because we live in a society where we have a void of the father's role in people's lives. And there's a challenge in being able to relate to the love of Father God because our relationship with our earthly fathers did not represent the nature of Father God in the way that it was intended. And for various reasons, whether you had a great father, he's still a human with flaws, or you had some really terrible experiences growing up with your father. In addition to that, so many were not equipped by their dads. Maybe you had a passive father. Maybe you had a performance-driven father. Maybe you had an addict father. Maybe you had an angry father. Or in many cases, an emotionally and spiritually passive dad who didn't take initiative to walk you through what you needed in your life and in your journey to be able to live powerfully as a son or as a daughter, and ultimately to walk as a child of your father in heaven. You see, the earthly father has a very, very powerful role. And it was one when I began to really recognize this in my own life, to realize there were some gaps, there were some wounds. And out of that, I struggled. Because you were meant to be loved, You were meant to be told who you are. You were meant to be validated, affirmed, and accepted by your earthly father. Only a dad can do that. And there is a plague in society where the father's voice, the earthly father's voice, in so many cases, has been absent. He might have been there physically, but wasn't there to equip you in what you needed. Even the Bible talks about the power of the father-son, father-child relationship. In the book of Malachi chapter 4, you can look this up for yourself. The Bible says, Behold, I'm going to send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Like, Whoa, these are some strong statements, right? And he will turn the hearts of the father to the children. Listen to that. Before the great and dreadful day of the Lord, he will turn the hearts of the father to the to the children. God's heart is to turn fathers to their children. Think about that. He's wanting to do generational healing, reconciliation, and empowerment. He's wanting to heal the generations. And he's also wanting to turn the hearts of the children to the fathers. Lest I come and strike the earth with a curse. So there's a powerful statement here that in the healing of relationships, there can be healing in the land. And so God is revealing to us his heart is that his father nature be revealed. That's why when you see the life of Jesus, everything he did was pointing back to the father. If you see me, you see the father. He said, in that day, you'll ask me nothing. You'll pray the father in my name. Jesus, how do we pray? Simple, pray our Father. Everything he directed was back to the Father. And it's been my observation in the 25 plus years of ministry work that I've been doing in many different roles is that Christians are passionate about knowing Christ, but they're avoiding the Father. And so it's reflected in their relationship. It's reflected in their prayer life. It's reflected in how they do life. Jesus is the cornerstone. He's the way, the truth, and the life. But there's a depth of knowing the Father that we were intended to live in. It's the Father's love. All good things come from the Father with where there is no variation or shadow of turning. 
He's a good father. But the key to the depth of understanding love is knowing him as a father and as a dad. And we live in a plague where the father's voice is being stripped away. Now, if your earthly father didn't receive the father's love, how is he going to give that to you? So the only way the change in the generations is going to happen is when we truly start to learn what it means to be loved as sons and daughters. You can't learn to be a powerful father or powerful mother unless you first learn to just be a loved son or daughter because that's where everything starts from. So God calls himself a father. So for you to heal the father wounds in your life, because we all have them. And even if your father was a great dad, we have to ask, did he equip you to live as an overcomer? So there's some questions you got to ask. Was your father a, a spiritual leader in your home? These aren't questions to blame him or to say it's all his fault. But usually our wounds with Father God or our struggles with Father God mirror our earthly father relationship. Was he the spiritual leader in your home? Did he express love for you in his words and actions? Because some of the powerful things a father is to impart to his children is one, an atmosphere of love that is regularly spoken and regularly emphasized through words and actions, his love for you. Two is identity, that you're a loved son, you're a loved daughter, to pull out who you are and to really encourage it and empower it. Just like the father said to Jesus, this is my beloved son. And in the kingdom of God, that needs to be spoken from the moment you're conceived, the moment you're born and all throughout life. When the father spoke this over Jesus, it wasn't at the end of his ministry. It was before his ministry started. You need to hear and know that you're loved on a regular basis. You need to know who you are. And you need to get your validation, acceptance, and approval. And so many of us are trying to find validation and love in all the wrong places, in our work and getting accepted by people and trying to achieve or whatever it is. Finding addictions, choosing bad relationships. Because what you really want is the love and acceptance and approval of your earthly father, which was meant to springboard you into relating to your heavenly father. Was your earthly father easily accessible when you needed him? Was he a safe place of love? Most of all, did your father equip you? And so I believe so much of our healing journey centers back to healing what our lens is when we relate to God. Because when I say to you, okay, let's let God heal your life. Let's let him do a powerful work in your life. I'm introducing you to a father. Well, what does dad bring up for you? What does the word dad, daddy, father bring up to you? Because so many write to me and say to me, I ain't going there because my dad was da-da-da-da. He was this way. He was abusive. He was passive. He was an alcoholic or He just wasn't there. Or maybe you have a make-believe dad where you make believe an image of your dad, but it's really not that accurate, but you you wanted him to be something, so you kind of created a fairy tale, but maybe you just really honest, you know, this is what it is. This is what really it was like. Not in blame. This isn't about blaming him because he has his own brokenness, and he only could give out of the, the bucket that he carried. And for many, it was empty. For many dads, all they knew to do was work. So they threw themselves into their work, but didn't know how to be present for you in your life, in your journey. So where does that leave you today? Because if we want to experience the healing and freedom God designed, we need God to heal the father image in our hearts. Now, there's a number of recommendations I would love to give to you. I have a short book that I wrote called Experiencing God's Love as Your Father. This begins to walk you through some of your earthly father lenses and how important it is to relate to God as a father. And if that book rings true for you in your journey, dive into what helped me was understanding the root of rejection. When I began to really see this root area in my life, because wherever the father's love and the father's investment is absent, rejection takes that place. And it will train you to live in a way that's counterfeit to what love says. 
I encourage you to jump into those resources because they can truly be helpful to you in your journey. We've got in this Heart Healing Journey teaching series, I uh, have it on paperback and audio and an ebook, and there's also a course, and in the course, there's additional prayers that are there that will be helpful for you in being able to establish, okay, how can I begin stirring areas of my heart to allow the healing process to take place? Of course, on my website, marktohesus.com, there's tons of resources that go further and further into this. But my purpose in this video is where can I begin to heal my lens of what it's like to relate to an earthly father? And how has that impacted my relationship with my heavenly father? Because today would be a great day for God to begin to do a healing work in your life. I pray this encourages you. I pray that it's helpful for your life and for your journey. Share this with others. May it be a blessing to the process that God is doing in your heart and life. I know it has changed my life forever, and I pray that it blesses you. And I look forward to talking to you and more resources. God bless.